In previous videos, we looked at generalised animal and plant cells. But in multicellular organisms, many cells will become specialised to carry out specific functions. In animals, most types of cells become specialised, or differentiate, early on in the organism's development. However, many types of plant cells are able to differentiate throughout the plant's life. In this video, we will look at some examples of specialised cells and how they are adapted to carry out their functions. Nerve cells carry an electrical signal around the body. The axon is the part of the cell which carries the impulse. These are very long, allowing connections to be made between different parts of the body. The cell body of the nerve cell contains dendrites, allowing connections to also be made with other nerve cells. In addition, the nerve ending, or axon terminal, contains neurotransmitter chemicals, which allow an impulse to be passed from the nerve cell to a muscle. The axon terminal also contains many mitochondria, providing the energy required to make these chemicals. Next, muscle cells. There are three types of muscle cells found in the body. Smooth muscle, which is found in the blood vessels and the intestines, to name a few places. Cardiac muscle, which is found in the heart. And skeletal muscle, which is attached to the bones of the skeleton. Skeletal muscle is the only type of muscle cell which contracts voluntarily, meaning we control the contraction and relaxation of these muscles, and its movements are not automatic. Cardiac and skeletal muscle are said to be striated, as they appear striped under a microscope. Striated muscle cells are adapted to contain special proteins, which allow the fibres to contract, and many mitochondria to produce the energy needed to allow the cells to contract. Striated muscle cells can also store glycogen, which can be broken down and used by the mitochondria as an energy source. Sperm cells contain the genetic material from the male parent, and their role is to swim through the female's reproductive system to reach, and then fertilise, the egg. Sperm cells have a large nucleus carrying the male's genetic information. They also have a long, whip-like tail, allowing them to swim towards the egg, and contain many mitochondria to provide the energy required for the cell to work. The head of the sperm cell contains an acrosome, which contains digestive enzymes to break down the outer layers of the egg cell, allowing fertilisation to occur. So those are some examples of specialised animal cells, and now we're going to look at some examples of specialised plant cells. Root hair cells absorb water and minerals efficiently from the soil. The root hair, which is a small thin extension poking out of the cell into the soil, increases the surface area of the cell in contact with the soil, allowing for maximum absorption. Like the other cells we have discussed, root hair cells have many mitochondria to provide the energy needed for the active transport of minerals into the cells. They also have a large vacuole to speed up the rate of osmosis, which is the movement of water into the cell. We will discuss active transport and osmosis in a bit more detail in the next video. Photosynthetic cells are plant cells that carry out photosynthesis in order to make food for the plant. They contain chloroplasts, containing the green pigment chlorophyll which absorbs the light energy needed for photosynthesis. These cells are usually found in the leaves and other outer layers of the plant so that they can absorb as much light as possible. They contain a large vacuole which keeps the cell turgid or rigid. This helps to support the stem of the plant and to keep the leaf spread out, also allowing as much light as possible to be captured. The xylem of a plant carries water and mineral ions from the roots to the rest of the plant. Xylem cells form large tubes for water to be drawn up. The tubes are made of individual xylem cells that have died due to a build-up of the chemical lignin. The ends of these cells erode, leaving a long tube. Xylem cells must be adapted to withstand the high pressure exerted by water moving up the xylem, otherwise the plant will not be properly supported. This is why lignin builds up in spirals and rings in the cell walls of the xylem cell, making the cells very strong and allowing them to support the plant. 
flow on cells carry glucose made in photosynthesis to the rest of the plant. Like xylem cells, phloem cells also form tubes, but these cells are actually living. They are able to form tubes because the cell walls between adjacent cells breaks down to form sieve plates with small holes in them. This allows water carrying the glucose to move through the tube. To allow the dissolved sugars to travel easily through the tube, phloem cells have lost many of their organelles. The cells are instead supported by companion cells, which are found next to the phloem cells. These transfer energy made in their mitochondria to the phloem cells, and this energy allows the dissolved sugars to move up and down the plant through the phloem.